Podcast of Poseidon is a spoiler-heavy podcast. That's an understatement. We're going to discuss not just the events of this book, but the Rydenverse as a whole, and really anything that we feel is relevant. You can find full spoiler warnings in the show notes. Well, we could assume he's 100% bronze. If he was made well, by like, Hephaestus. that's the thing, right? Bronze is a mixture of copper and iron, I want to say. It is? I know nothing yes, about Yes, you don't metal. just find bronze. I thought you just found it's bronze. Why... No, bronze. It's like bronze gold and silver. Alloy. Gold, silver, bronze. No. Bronze is an alloy. No, it's gold, silver, copper. Why are we getting on bronze um, metals then? That... Wait, what? Do you also know that steel is the mixture of iron and carbon? Yes, because that's why you can use steel against fairies, because it has iron in it. Hello, mortals, monsters, and myth lovers alike. You're listening to Podcast of Poseidon, where we explore how ancient myths become modern pop culture, for reading Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This is Chapter 36, Talos. I'm your co-host, on loan from the Hunters of Artemis, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, hailing from Rivet Town, DJ. How's everybody doing today? Rivet Town is this lovely little, just a quaint little town outside of Robot City. Sometimes we get some unsavory likes from the city, but other times we make a name for ourselves there. I don't know what to do with that, so I'm just going to take us to the camp store real quick to make sure we have everything we need. So, DJ. What's up? Do you recall how when we go through the topics for episodes for each season, we determine which uh, myth points in the book we think have a lot of meat on the bone that we can really talk about, and then the ones that we think maybe would just be a little bit of a gloss over, and we save those for our patron bonus episode at the end of the season? Yes. I'm aware. Uh, You may recall that Talos, briefly mentioned and appearing in this book, was one that was originally cast to our uh, bonus mini-myth roundup. Yeah, it it was. So um, why are we talking about it today, Darian? Well, it's because today's guest, Owen, really, really wanted to talk about Talos. Today, we are joined by Owen, host of Through the Mist, a Ryanverse theory podcast where they try to make sense of all that weird magical lore. Owen, say hello. Hello. Wait, it's a giant robot. Why wouldn't you want to talk about a giant robot? No, okay? it's not it's nothing that we not, didn't want to talk you, about. You were a giant absolutely robot. right. We're just uh, didn't realize he had so much more to him than is a robot that Hephaestus built. <laughs> what I'm saying is that we wanted Owen on the podcast so badly that we rewrote our episode uh, topics for the season to make sure we could have Owen on the main feed. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That's fair. So, Owen, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what is your Ryanverse affiliation? I do a podcast, as previously mm-hmm. stated, for mm-hmm. the Ryanverse, called Through the Mist. Please go listen to it. Um, it's great. Mm, I've been on it. That, that, I mean, yeah, yes, you have. We talked about death. It's a great episode. It's very fun. Mm-hmm. Full, lighthearted as can be. <laughs> Ryan, I don't really know what I am in the Ryanverse. I just I would like to just be like a seeing through more. A, mm. a, a that would make sense. Mortal. That that For feels like vibe. wrong wording. But like <laughs> either because mm-hmm. I just think it'd be cool to know about it, but then not have to deal with it. You know, that's just it's not, not your problem. A mortal with special eyes. What do you see with your special eyes? I want Rachel's eyes, but none of her oh, oracle man. responsibilities. No, nothing. No responsibilities for Owen. Just wants to know what's happening. Does not want to actually be part of this whatever. I'll, I'll either I don't be, blame him. Is it Ahmed or Rachel? One of the, Rachel without the Oracle. Is it Ahmed? Oh, no. Guy from Magnus Chase, whatever his name is. How about just Sally Jackson? Oh, Sa- Sally Jackson's also good. Sally Jackson, yes. Except Sally has to be involved because her child is a demigod and is the constant stress and worry of a mother times ten. Yes. Let's jump in. We are talking about Talos. Well... A Talos prototype that causes the death of Bianca D'Angelo. This is actually really sad, and Owen's going to make us be sad today, I guess. It's Thanks, very Owen. Sad and... No, we can just skip over Bianca. It's fine. I don't think we can. <laughs> just like the rest of the fandom. Thanks, Owen. Sure. Yes. We'll just skip over Bianca. I was about to say, which is apparently super controversial within the fandom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, okay. Uh, DJ. What's up? 
I'm going to throw it to you. What's the deal with Talos in the Percy Jackson books? So Talos, at least this version of Talos, is essentially the guardian of a junkyard that you can't take anything from. If you do, he wakes up and tries to step on you. And he's big. He towers, like 150 feet tall, if I remember correctly, or somewhere along the likes. He's fucking massive. <laughs> it's wild that Bianca even yeah, managed no, to get in and do something in that fucking thing as fast as she did. Yeah. And then once she does, he topples and... I just had to convert feet to meters for all... Uh... Just to actually understand how tall that is. And yeah, all, sorry. Everyone else out there, that's uh, 45 meters. Yeah. Yes, okay. Th- thank you, Captain UK. 45. I was about to say, it's give or take 50 meters. meters. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the book doesn't give us an exact measurement. It does just say he was impossibly tall, a skyscraper with legs and arms. Yeah. And he gleamed wickedly in the moonlight, which is like, I love it when something agit- like wickedly. does something wickedly. Yeah. Like, that's just a good... Good adverb. What is it? I was about to. She has an awesome wicked or a, or a nasty oh. wicked though. Uh, Bianca's mm-hmm. death is very it reminiscent is of Frank's. Have you read? A... I guess before we run further, have you read Trials of Apollo, Owen? I read all of them. Okay, cool. Frank's like t- f- double faked and like you know his fake out death where there wasn't a body and we were all kind of expecting Bianca to show up later. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of the thing where it's like, there's no body. So, come on. A character, if you don't actually see their body, they're not really dead. That's the rule of fiction. Here's the thing. I think the very reason he and Rick said no. couldn't do that. I don't think I don't think Hyperion, Disney Hyperion would have let that happen. Let there be a body on in book. Interesting. You might be right, actually. At least in those early days. Or, or was it? Or was it for the? Or was it for the? Or was it purely for the poem of "Lost, <laughs> Lost in the Land Without Way"? I was gonna say, yeah, because it does like when they're at well, the- like it could be just like a life lost, right? Yeah, it could just be lost, like they misplaced her. But it was vague enough where if Rick decided he didn't actually want to kill Bianca, she could have turned back up later. Yeah, and I feel like that's an intentional storytelling in, in in the next book. Yeah, I mean, in the next book, we see her ghost and is, no, she's confirmed she's dead. Yeah. But it is vague enough that I wonder if he was still toying with the idea of, like, maybe she goes missing. Maybe this is what, like, Nico has to deal with and he's trying to summon her, but he can't because she's not dead. But, no, towards the end, he's like, I feel her dying. Like, I know she's in front of the judges right now. And Percy's like, hey, why the fuck do you know that? Why do you what? feel that? What the fuck does that mean, kid? You listen to me, kid. Yep. Anyway, not what this episode's about. But this is not about Nico. No. So yeah, yeah, that's basically it. It's a uh, they're in the junkyard of guards. Aphrodite yeah. does warn them not to take anything. She yeah. says that Poseidon, or not Poseidon, Hephaestus is very fussy with all of his things. Yeah, don't don't take anything from there. He doesn't Come like on. it. But how can Bianca not feel a tiny bit of guilt and go, "Well, this is what I'm going to do." That's why she went. And, I mean, she does. She, that's what she, happened. That's why right? she went and tried to. That's why she did what she did. She dropped it and went to take down the yeah because Talos and. To, uh, dies for it. Yeah, because at first we think she took. They found a hair ba- a hair piece that turns into a bow. Clearly, something of like. Okay, so can we hold on? I need to talk about this junkyard real quick because it baffles me, and it's not what the episode is about. But we have Owen here, whose whole thing is talking about the baffling elements of the <laughs> whole like Ryan universe and like what is this magic and how does it work. Owen, what's the deal with this junkyard? Why do the gods have it? Why is it in North, like the deserts of North America? Like, does Olympus not have space for it? Like, where is, is it everyone's junk or is it just Hephaestus's? Okay, okay. No, I mean, let's, let's be honest. No, you wouldn't put your junk nard near your home. Let's just... Yeah. You'd put it in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so true. it makes sense it's in the desert, in the middle yes. of nowhere, next to a ghost town. So, you know. But, I mean, what is it? Zoe says it's probably everything's been thrown in there for a reason because it's got a deadly curse or something. I see maybe and Hephaestus probably just uses it the most mm-hmm. because he's Mr. Tinkerer. That's fair. No, that makes sense because Aphrodite implies that like, oh, hey, don't take take anything because it's Hephaestus's. But I think Zoe or Talia are the ones that say it's a, the junkyard of the gods, plural. So I was just wondering if you could tell us like, is it just Hephaestus's like the trash bin he I mean, throws stuff only, in? The or? only time we see it. Yeah. I mean, the only time we see it is that book. 
mm-hmm. and I mean, yeah, the, and so all your detail, that's all your information you're going to work out have. if this is more than one god. Oh, and you have done episodes with and... less. <laughs> Extrapolate. <laughs> Pulling Owen into doing an episode for us right now. I'm trying to remember what, well, you got, so you got the hair clip, which is a hunter's bow. Because it looks like a hunter's bow. Mm-hmm. So it looks like Artemis. That well. was something that Hephaestus made for Artemis, or mm-hmm. Artemis found and threw away. Yeah. What else is in there that we see? A lot of it's just like mechanical Hephaestus things, isn't it? Really. Yeah, bits and bobs. Uh, there's the what Bianca the, takes is the, the mythomagic figure, the Hades one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which? What? T- t- hang on. New theory. Yep. Is Mythomagic a game made by the gods? Uh, it sounds shockingly accurate. <laughs> because why would there be a Mythomagic figure? Exactly. And it's in, in like... Because Hephaestus is and a big fucking And I always like, thought dork. that, oh, it was some sort of magical. Hephaestus plays Mythomagic. Like, there are plenty of games that I play that I'm like, eh, this seems like a little strange for me to play. I couldn't bring anything up right now. But... Honestly, if there is a game just about Idaho, Davis won't call himself out. Yeah, if there is a game about Idaho, I'd sit Sorry, down what? and play it. <laughs> like, well, yeah, that's yeah. The whole state went crazy for Napoleon Dynamite. So yeah, exactly. that tracks. So like, just like I bet they see, par- they probably see paraphernalia of themselves come and go all the time. Like this got some staying power, and also it included other pantheons. Okay, hold on. so to clarify. Your theory is that it is, in fact, a game created no. by mortals. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a game created by mortals that Hephaestus is just really into. Yes. And Owen's theory is that it's created by the gods and the mortals have gotten their hands on it. See, now, I, I came up, I did, while we were talking, I have come up with another theory for why Love the mathematic figure was there. And that is that um, on one of the demigod trips up to Olympus at Christmas time that they do, you know, uh-huh. at Camp Half-Blood. One of the, uh, they, it was big. It was big mytho magic times for mm-hmm. the, for the world. Like that was peak mytho magic times. Mm-hmm. So some of the kids brought up their figures to play while they got bored. Cause you know, they will be boring long meetings or something that they're having to sit through or whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Um, so they brought it up and they dropped it. And then the cleaner comes down and goes, <laughs> cleans it up, throws it in the bin and it goes to the dump. Yeah, I mean, obviously they kept all the ones that weren't Hades. Hades is the only one that gets thrown out. Hades can't stay on Olympus at all. They left their entire set, so all the other Olympians are there, but Hades got tossed. Yeah, I still stand by Hephaestus, just a big fucking this nerd. Hephaestus. <laughs> then he has multiple Hades, so he doesn't need more than one, so he got rid of the extra. Yeah. Because it's not magic. No, it's not. It's literally just a little figurine for it. Yeah. He's open. He was opening the blind packs and then, oh, no, Hades. Another Hades. Like, I got damn. six of these. Dang it. Which sh- He got all the ones that whenever whenever Nika was going to go to buy it, he was first in line. So he got the Hades that Nika would have got. Oh, and that's he, why Nika never got Hades. Nico the only one he didn't have. <laughs> I think it was a special one. I think it was a shiny Hades that was in the deck. I have no idea. No, because it's she, she just says it's the only one Nika never has. Yeah, it's the bu- I always thought it was like special, where it's like it's not really myth magic, it just looks like one, but it occurs to me that no, it was just in fact a myth magic piece that was just at the top, and that's why Bianca yeah. grabbed it because she was thinking about her brother and wanted to give him a present. Because she knows this is hard on him, and if she could give it to him, she's like, I still care about you. Okay, this episode is not about myth magic, but maybe we should do a myth magic episode at some point in time. Find someone that plays like Magic the Gathering. Oh, and do you play Magic the Gathering? No, I'm not that mm. type of a nerd. No. <laughs> okay, so that is Talos, but the most important detail to note about Talos is that it's not Talos. Uh, Talia points that out when the giant bronze. It's actually great. I'm just going to read the description because I do like this. They make it out, thank the gods, but apparently the gods didn't want to be thanked. At that moment, I heard a sound like a thousand trash compactors crushing metal. I rolled around. Behind us, the scrap mountain was boiling, rising up. The ten toes tilted over, and I realized why they looked like toes. They were toes. The thing that rose up from the metal was a bronze giant in full Greek battle armor. He was impossibly tall, a skyscraper with legs and arms. He gleamed wickedly in the moonlight. He looked down at us. His face was deformed. The left side was partially melted off. His joints creaked with rust, and across his armor chest, written in thick dust by some giant finger, were the words, Wash me. Just, let's take a moment to classic Ryan humor. 
obviously. Wash me. I think that's a detail we all forget is while this giant mm-hmm. is trying to kill them and is causes the death of Bianca D'Angelo, it just says wash me across its chest. Zoe realizes it's Talos. And Percy, of course, is like, who's Talos? And I'm like, Percy, you pulled Procrustius out of your ass in LA while your friends are being ripped in half, but you don't know who Talos is? Where did to be Chiron's... Fair, where did Talos show up? We will get there, DJ. And it's actually a pretty big one. Hey, maybe uh, maybe Chiron's class didn't get there quite yet, right? Anyway, Talia points out that it's not the original because it's too small. So it's probably a prototype, maybe. A defective model. The metal giant didn't like the word defective. And then all hell breaks loose. So that's the important detail. Is This isn't actually Talos. It's a prototype Talos. Which tells us a lot. And it's interesting because we know Hephaestus created all these things. Which means that... So the junkyard's moved. I just wonder where the junkyard was before. Like what I'm perfect, that's what I'm saying! <laughs> What part of Greece did it sin? What part yeah, of, if it's part uh, of... Was it, is there another junkyard of the gods in Greece? And in other areas of the world? Is this like... Or, or yeah, or did or did Hephaestus throw a... Just take over a prototype, Talos, throw it in there, and then create, started creating a new junk pile? Yeah, maybe every time he creates a junk pile, it's uh, he makes another Talos to guard it. I hate that. That's but he, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't try to like make it perfect because he knows that it's it's still going to be stronger than whatever wanders into the fucking junkyard. <laughs> Probably. Is it interesting that it's like it's the left side of his face is like partially melted? Is that what makes it defective? Or like, what do we think happened there? Yeah, probably. Probably he treated it a little too long. We or he did. Or he did some safety tests on it. You know, shot a strong fire beam at it, so it could, and just it failed its safety test. Sorry. It failed the safety tests up. Had to be thrown out. We'll, we'll make it bigger, better next time. Yeah, that is really it. They, they're fighting it. Bianca, Percy calls up Bianca. He's like, hey, you took the, the bow, put it back. And she's like, I didn't take the bow. She doesn't admit the magic figure. She drops it, but it's too late. Doesn't stop the, the robot. So she grabs it again, and Percy realizes, oh, there's like a maintenance hatch on the bottom of its foot. We could probably get up in there and, and mess around with it. And Bianca's like, okay, I'm going to do that. So she gives him Percy the little figure, and she says, you know, give it to Nico. Tell him I'm sorry. And she runs up, and she gets up into the the the, creature, the Talos prototype's foot and just, I guess, just wrecks shop, does something that causes it to start beating on itself, and then it just runs into some electrical wires and then just runs across with pieces falling apart, and then we never find Bianca D'Angelo again. Percy should have done it because he had plot armor. You're not wrong, but <laughs> this is Bianca's hero moment. She had to do yes. this. It was yeah. kind of her fault, even though she was doing it to, like, because, you know, she wasn't stealing for herself. She was taking something small for her brother. Uh, but they were warned not to take anything. That's the thing. Yeah. If Percy did it, that means someone would have died, like, outside of the robot, which makes it even worse. This is somehow. true, because yeah, they were in the land of the robot. Someone had to get lost. Well, if it was Percy, no one else would have died. He just would have gotten lost. And would have turned up a couple of chapters Oh, yeah. Later. Percy would have just been fucking lost in the area trying to find his way to get to uh, Mount Tam to get Annabeth. Like, he'd have been he fucking lost. And I think that I, th- I think it's a crime that we didn't get that. <laughs> so that is basically the entire depth of Talos. Proto Talos. Talos. Beta Talos. Alpha Talos test minor. Talos. I don't know. In. Yep. Smaller Talos, mini Talos in Titan's Curse. So, basically, there was a giant robot that protected the island of Crete. And that's Talos. First mentioned by Hesiod around 700 BCE, so this dude dates back, right? Uh, But like all things, as we're dealing with mythology, we got a couple origin stories that we can play around with. First one, pretty common one is that he was a giant bronze man that was created by Hephaestus. Now, either he was made by Hephaestus specifically just to protect Crete as a gift to Minos, king of Crete, yes, that Minos, or he was created by Hephaestus for Zeus 
to give to Zeus's lover Europa to protect her from anybody kidnapping her from Crete. But either way, dude is a Crete. The third one, which is fascinating to me, is that it was not a creation of Hephaestus, but the last man left of an ancient bronze race. So from the Bronze Age, literally giants made of bronze. I think that second one is a bit of an overreaction. <laughs> a bit of it? It's just like, ah, oh, that must be a man. There was a whole civilization <laughs> of bronze men. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like the second option that you gave out of all three, right? One to protect Crete. Uh- which, like, yeah, fair, right? If you got invaders coming in from the sea, so it needs mm-hmm. to be able to stand in water. Bronze men, uh, those are some big fucking men, which is not unlike another theory I've heard just about the world of giants, you know? Uh, anyway, yeah, giants. and then it's like, giants. hey, I need to protect my girl, I need to protect my mistress. Can you do something about it? Hold on, bro. I got you. Here's a 300 foot tall man. <laughs> To protect her for years. And this is just like, dude, what? This fucking, I wanted maybe some like automated crossbows or something. Like, I didn't expect you to build a fucking, this seems, this seems a bit much. Are you, are you doing okay? You worried about, you worried about Aphrodite again? You, you trying to work something out here, but are you, are you prepping for a war with Ares? <laughs> Actually, that's a really good point, DJ. That's a really good point. <laughs> is this is this practice? You said you said this is the final product. Is this really the prototype? Oh no, oh no. Actually, yeah, I'm very excited for when we get to dive into Festus because it's fascinating. But I I really wanted to dive in more of this whole race of ancient bronze men thing, but I could find no more. On that, I could find no other writings from like Hesiod Here's or Homer or anybody expanding on it. You were looking for the wrong thing. You should have looked up. You should have looked up the world of giants theory because that's a fucking crazy dork ass theory, and I'm so into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll get to that when we talk about the giants. Owen, oh, can you explain the bronze men to me? So, so yeah, I mean. I scanned your notes beforehand, like a like a good guest. And, yep. <laughs> and I went, "Oh, bronze men. Let's look that up." Um, apparently, there was it was also it was also sprung from an ash tree. So you know, also an ash tree, of course, sprung from an ash tree. But apparent, basically, there's the five ages of man, according to mm-hmm. someone or another. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. In Greek, it was five, and then some Roman poet dropped it down to three or something or other. And so the Golden Age was the Kronos Age, then Silver or something else. Bronze Age, they literally, it was, they literally thought they were bronze men rather than it being a name for an age. The men were actually bronze, you know? That. Why, though? That was... Like, why was that the conclusion we drew? Why not? (laughs) I I mean, it's great, but also, like, what are we, it's amazing. Well, right, well, thank you, Owen, for that. Being the Golden Age, being fucking like Kronos, clearly they were thinking before humans, right? And I mean, now yeah. it's like when right, we look no, back, it... we got the Stone Era, the Bronze Age, and then the Industrial Era. I mean, there's obviously more to it. But the Bronze Age for yeah. like human history is they have made bronze and are making things out of bronze. Yeah, I know what the Bronze Age is historically, but no one's running around being like, also, they were made of bronze. No, but this is like Greek myth stuff. Okay, fine, fine. Ireland, Ireland. Oh, do you have anything else? Oh, no, it's just there's also humans in like all the other ages as well. It's weird. It's It's weird. Yeah. Hey, they were trying to work out how the world worked. They They were trying to work. Exactly, exactly. So with Talos, and I assume whether or not he was a last of a race of bronze men or was created by Hephaestus, one thing remains constant. He was made entirely of bronze, save for a single vein of ichor that ran from his ankle straight to his head. Which kind of actually makes the whole hatch in the foot thing work for me, because I was about to go on a whole thing about like how that's a wild place to put a like, maintenance hatch, and that doesn't make any sense. But it actually sounds like Rick was actually referencing the myth a little bit, as in his weak point was down in his ankle. I wonder... Mm. But why There's wouldn't a... the maintenance hatch in the foot make sense? The foot's a terrible place to put the maintenance hatch. 
It's How not the first time I've seen it there. Standing up straight. In the ankle. On the leg somewhere. In the chest, on the shoulder, in the neck, in the back of the head. Like anywhere where it's not standing up straight is completely covered by the ground. Good point. Kneecap. Point's made. Point's made. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not the first time I've seen a maintenance hatch on the foot of an iron giant. And I'm not talking about the Iron Giant. There's actually... In- <laughs> I was like, DJ, too soon. <laughs> no, no. I've, I, it's been fucking like 30, 40 years now. <laughs> no, I meant too soon in the recording to bring up the like Iron Giant. We're not there yet. <laughs> Ridiculous. Fine, I'll wait. Yeah, hold on. We're still talking about the myth. <laughs> so, okay, so the, the hatch. Uh, so basically his job was to protect Crete from invaders or protect Europa or as a gift to Minos, whatever. But he basically just circled the island three times a day because he was so big he could just walk Godzilla style, rise out of the ocean and just walk around the island. And then where like f- like strange ships would approach, he'd just throw rocks at them. And if someone wanted to find oh, him, he could yeah. like crush them to death. Like this thing was hu- he was huge. I thought it was interesting that like Talos was a really big deal in creation culture like he appeared on coins for hundreds of years and some of the stuff i was reading suggested that he actually might have been a creation sun god zeus has an epithet for talos oh would you like Apparently to elaborate? zeus had a talos epi- epithet as well like just mm-hmm. to compound on the f- fact that he was important yeah what is an epithet exactly? Because it's a phrase I know and see, but I will admit that I don't fully understand what that means. To my knowledge, it's the bit like at the start of like you would how you would distinguish different versions of Aphrodite would be a, a mm. name in front of their name mm-hmm. or a name after their name. It might be a different, technically a different word for after their name, but I'm going to use the same word in this sound, aren't I? But it's that. Okay. It's how you would differentiate different versions of the... It's like Aphrodite the Beautiful versus Aphrodite the warlike people for Sparta and Athens. Okay, okay. So Talos on Crete was potentially a version of Zeus. Yeah, other gods Kinda. had... Because you said the sun god as well. Apollo had an mm-hmm. epithet, but it was, yeah, it was yeah. something Talos-ish. I can't remember. I didn't write it down. No, no, it's really cool because I was because it's like another thing that comes up when you actually like study this kind of stuff because there's a I think just general misconception of people who like oh I like mythology I get it that there is like here's the version that everyone's telling and even if it's tweaked a little differently like this was like the gist of it but that's not true and I think this Talos one like really underlines it because like on Crete you have this figure that was. Not viewed as just like a protector, but like as a protector, a la like a Zeus figure, a god, a sun god, like was really, really important. And then outside of that, in like non Cretan areas of Greece, the, that story from Crete was retold to make this being something created by the gods, not of the gods, to be defeated by heroes from other places. Kind of like to show that like the powers of Crete would be toppled by the rest of the powers from these other like parts of Greece. And that's just interesting because it's like, again, hey, there's no wrong way to tell these stories. There's a lot of different ones. So the Argonauts, DJ. Earlier you asked, well, where does Talos even appear? Like, where does he come from? And the answer is his main appearance and what we have, like, you know, left over is the story of the Argonauts. So a kind of a big one. Well, maybe his class didn't quite get to the Argonauts. Maybe the class didn't quite get to it. This is true. This is true. Or, or so, on the day that it happened, it, it was just one of those hits where Percy was just like, no thought, head empty, in, out, one, in, one, out, with the other, you know? <laughs> no, we know he always tried in Mr. Burner's class because he liked him. He tried to pay attention to Mr. Burner's class. So, basically, this is after they've gotten the fleece. You know, Jason, comma, the Argonauts. He's gotten the fleece because Medea's already with them. So they're sailing home now. And they're like poaching Crete and they're like, oh, we should just like, we'll just like hang out on this island real quick. And Medea's like, yeah, no, don't do that. That's a terrible idea. And they're like, why? And then Talos rises out of the water and they're like, oh, that's why. And Medea gets them out of another sticky situation because she gets them out of every sticky situation because she's actually great. And men just suck, honestly. She either summons spirits 
to destroy Talos, or she tricks Talos. And I kind of like the second one a little better, because what she does is she thinks to herself, well, he looks like a man, so he probably has the fallibilities of a man. So she says to him, hey, you want to be immortal? I can make you immortal. And Talos is like, I would love to be immortal, actually. That sounds great. I may be a bronze uh, man, giant, but I would like to be immortal. And she's like, cool. All I need to do is... I still rust. <laughs> yes. Does bronze rust? Iron doesn't rust. I have no idea. Everything... Bronze doesn't rust, because rusting is the oxidation of iron. So iron but does rust. Bronze will oxidize. Bronze will oxidize. Okay, I mean, that, okay. That's, like, technical. So All metals it do it in the end. Because it's the copper inside of it. Yeah, it will turn slightly green because of cops. Okay. So, Medea clocks that he's got Become this, like, nail. Oh, that's a good point. Thank you, Owen. Statue of Liberty. Okay. Also, throw that one, throw this one out there. Celestial bronze. Oh, is celestial bronze an element? Owen, what is celestial no, bronze? No, because it's not real. What? I am... I imagine celestial bronze is very similar to copper and tin, just blessed by the gods. It's like holy water. Oh, it's just normal water blessed on, by on priests. On the metals of the void inverse now, aren't I? Kinda. Hold on. You, br- you brought up celestial bronze. I know, because, you know, that's what the gods... Everything built by Hephaestus is celestial bronze. So everything built inverse. by Vulcan is imperial gold. <laughs> exactly. So, like, in the Roidenverse, you would Which, say most likely I Talos say was built. Would be Absolutely. a wildly worse metal than Celestial Bronze. <laughs> Gold is not the greatest thing to build anything except for, like, boards out of, like, computer boards <laughs> or microchips. Gold is, because go- gold it's is soft very easy to dent. And it's hella fucking, yeah. It's it's a very soft metal, no matter how much you heat treat it, and also it is super electroconductive. Perfect for Jason, then. In the Void Inverse, everything Hephaestus makes is out of celestial bronze. So if you convert this myth, which is you know in the world that we that I look in, um, it would be out of celestial mm-hmm. bronze. Like that's just a given. So. And that is magic, so you can say it doesn't oxidize in the same way, or at the same okay. pace. Especially, but, yeah. But, I mean, you can care for blades and stuff, so in the in this real, more realistic fictional universe of actual Talos, would he be green or not? It is very much depends on how much he cared for himself and how much he scrubbed himself clean. All right. If Thank he's you the always. last of his kind, I imagine he really doesn't care that much anymore. <laughs> Or he cares a whole lot because he's a representation. Anyway, it doesn't matter because Talos lets Medea pull that nail out of his ankle that is, uh, you know, the, the thing, the vein from his ankle to his head with the eco- with the I-core that's keeping him alive. Uh, he lets her pull that out and then just basically all of his life force just bleeds out of him and he dies. That, that's a real they're lying to you mood. <laughs> like, that's just a very real they're lying to you move. Like, hey, I know that they were telling you that this nail in your ankle holds your, like, lifeblood. But that's really not it. It's like mm-hmm. they're lying to you. It's actually draining your life force, you know? <laughs> yep, if you let me pull it out, you'll be immortal. And Talos says, cool. And that's it's really poorly for, for poor Talos, who was... Honestly, just doing his job. But, you know. Yeah, Yeah, I did want to reflect on it a little bit because I found it really interesting that Medea is able to trick Talos by offering to make him immortal because he's a bronze robot. And we usually view robots as kind of being vaguely immortal in that, you know, they're not aging. They could be destroyed, but they're. Yeah, as long as he's like, you know, maintenance. And if he's the last of like a bronze race, he's clearly very, very old anyway. But being old and being like long lived isn't necessarily the same as being immortal. So, anyway, I was just Here's found that thing, interesting. Though, is that if you're the last of your race, do you really want to be immortal? I mean, yeah. So let's talk about him. So yeah, probably not. So let's focus on the if he was created by Hephaestus type deal. I thought it was interesting because it was more. It felt if I wanted to really dive into this and like write a paper about it, I might argue that the fact that Talos was able to 
was able to be tricked by the promise of immortality suggests that the only thing that was separating him from being of the gods is the fact that the gods are immortal. So if he was made immortal, he would be on the same level as his creators and maybe potentially no longer have to follow their orders. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. The Inca is also like the immortal blood of gods. It's just... Yeah. That was powering... That's... I mean, we could do it's just like the thing that Hephaestus used to power this creation and give it kind of like a life, which is my next question. Hey, Owen, is the Talos prototype alive? Are robots alive? Is AI alive? How deep do you want to get right now? <laughs> well, might as well just dive into the next part of this, uh, this episode we've got because, fun fact... Talos, the Talos story, is considered a very early example of science fiction in Western storytelling. Not like this is the first sci-fi story, but it has those elements of creating artificial life. Non-organic artificial life as well. Nor Yes, exactly. Non-organic artificial life. We have to go to Mary Shelley for that. Scholar Adrian Mer calls the story of Talos one of our earliest comp conceptions of a robot. Just go to saying, like, people have an impulse to imagine things that aren't possible yet. There's a timeless link between imagination and science. And I, that's cool. That's cool to think about how this, how do I want to word this without seeming absolutely insane? Basically, I hear the story of Talos in Titan's Curse and then reading about it in, like, the Argonauts and stuff. And it's a giant bronze man created by Hephaestus to protect Crete. And my brain is like, giant robot. Obvi. Giant. And I don't think twice about that because giant robot. Yeah. Giant robots exist in storytelling. I don't think that that's... I don't reflect on it. I need a scholar to point out, hey, this story is from 700 BCE. That's wild that in a time way before computers, way before Frankenstein, way before any of this was even remotely like AI kind of possible to have actually created and programmed, we had stories about creating mechanical, non-organic, artificial life. And isn't that fucking cool? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that yesterday. I'm like, this is fucking insane to think about. That. Like, I wonder if like other cultures too have something similar. Where it's like, yeah, we know that these materials are strong. What if a man was made out of it? Yeah, I think we could probably do some digging and find a couple. I did notice. I, I didn't write that down. I wish I did. I, it was impossible to find again. There was like a list of like other mythological robots, basically. Like non-organic life created out of like non-organic elements, but life nonetheless. And that's cool. Uh, so... Do y'all want to talk about giant robots? Giant robots. I am going like to stop, uh, like a, like bring it back to what I was saying before about the maintenance hatch yeah. in the foot. Yes, it's there we the go. Welcome I've back. Seen it. Yeah. Uh, and it's, in fact, in Call of Duty Zombies, in the f best Black Ops 2 map, and just the best map in general, Origins, and then it comes back again in Black Ops 3. And I hope it comes back again because it's just a phenomenal map. There are three giant fucking robots walking around that really are impossibly tall, especially when you take into the fact this happened in 1917 around World War I. Okay. <laughs> and okay. they have maintenance hatches on their foot that you have to shoot. And then it, like when they step on you, you get up into their head because German engineering. And they all have pieces of a wind staff inside of them. And they're named after Freya, Thor, and Odin. That's cool. Yeah. That's all I got on that. Like, at least that specific one, so. <laughs> Why would Hephaestus need a maintenance hatch to go on the foot? Like, it implies that he would get into it through the foot. But he wouldn't need to shrink small. He could. It was probably the spot for the plug. It wasn't a maintenance hat. maintenance hatch. They call it a maintenance hatch. They call it a maintenance hatch, but that's from the fucking kids looking at a giant robot with a hole on its foot. Yeah, maybe it's how he injected it's, the... What, what do you think it says? Maintenance oh, hatch, maintenance maybe. hatch, maintenance hatch around the fucking ring of it? Maybe. Hold on. I think it. It I think it actually does. In which case, a little ridiculous. 
Maybe maybe it was for his uh, for his kids, you know, so they could help him tinker around and build it. Ha! There was a hole in its heel, like this a large manhole. There were red words painted around it, which I deciphered only after the foot came down. For maintenance only. Fucking ridiculous. I <laughs> The text Maintenance hatch. <laughs> I do like Owen's theory that it's for the, the Hephaestus kids to be able to get into. Because Hephaestus could just this thing is giant, but Hephaestus could, you know, he could be super giant and it's just on his work table and now he can like open up the chest and maintenance it. Like he doesn't actually have to physically climb into it to do anything. Yeah. Strange. So does anybody have any So here's what's specific. there are so many robots. There's like so like many I said robots. earlier. So many robots. Like when I was reading this, didn't even think twice about, huh? It's wild that the Greeks would have kind of a robot myth because it's just robots. Robots are everywhere. So we have to really narrow it down on the kind of robots we're going to talk about for this episode because we could just everything. Uh, I could talk about Void, the totally real boy from DuckTales for hours. So we have to have some parameters to keep that from happening. I could talk about mechs a lot. Of but mechs. you, as, as DJ said yesterday, it's not it's but Talos he's not, not a, mech. a mech, but he's a giant. It's very specific. Here's the thing, though. It's very specific. He's not a mech. However, in Titanfall 2, the mechs have an AI of their own. So when you're outside of it, it can do things itself. That's entirely different. And honestly, I did. That was Amazing how I Amazing games. Talos. Everybody should go check out Titanfall 2. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, how underrated is the Titanfall series? Apparently, extremely. I did kind of misunderstand what Bianca does inside of Talos, I kind of always pictured her climbing up in there and then getting to like a mech type station. And she's the one that is actually controlling it and making it beat up itself and run into those things. But now it occurs to me that she did just climb up in there and start pulling out wires. I think, I think that's the case that happened. Yeah. Which yeah. is I swear. wild <sighs> for how my understanding of how Talos just in general, like especially like going back to myths, how he would be really constructed. Not with mm-hmm. wires, just with god magic, right? Because we see the Daedalus yeah. sphere. It's not like that thing has wires like crazy in it. Daedalus just like, it was like cogs and wheels with crazy fucking god magic. Okay, so she's not pulling out wires then, but she's probably like ripping out cogs and stuff. Owen, what do you got? Well, like, I see, I've always pictured it as running in there doing damage to things. And I can't remember. There's a story before this, because I, I read the books before I watched the mm-hmm. show. But it's a mech, but don't. But we're not talking about the mech side of it, so don't. don't. Okay. But uh, the giant robot from Korra. Yeah. How the how everyone else is doing stuff to the robot itself and causing robot damage rather than, you know, that that sort of thing. Yeah. Versus In the Legend of Korra, DJ, there are the... they make these giant mech robots, which are very cool. And they kind of run off of nice. the spirit magic, right? That's what's powering them. Yeah. So it's kind of like having them run off robots. of like the god Icor, 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 whatever. Yeah, it's got like a heart of like spirit magic and yeah. Lightning bolts it, it like blows up. Mm-hmm. You know, great fun things. Great fun things. But yeah, so we have to narrow it down. No mechs, because he's not a mech. Giant robots, nope. specifically giant robots that maybe are supposed to protect something. I've got a list. I'm sure you've all seen it. Does anybody have any giant robots that they particularly are fond of that they want to bring to the table? And maybe uh, we make a game out of it because you know I love playing a game. What giant robots do you think could fight Talos? Because giant robot fight. Most modern giant robots because they also have a gun. That's true. <laughs> the Iron yeah. Giant would wreck uh, Talos. All right, he's just looking up something. Oh, and I think now is a good time to ask whether or not AI is alive. Uh, 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 <laughs> oh, when you asked to be here. No. TJ says no. Not alive. But the Iron my Giant. my computer's not alive when I turned it on. The Iron Giant. Your computer doesn't have AI. He, he is sentient. He is sentient. He is not alive. There is a difference. There is not a difference. Yeah, there is. A tree is alive. Is it sentient? See, no. no, no, okay. It's, can we, this yes. Is... Well, mm, that's hard. Is a cat sentient? Some people would say no. You've met my cat. <laughs> Your cat knows exactly what the fuck he's doing. 
It's more sentient. Karen literally. knows exactly what that motherfucker is doing. Jesus, Darren. Yes. But like, okay, okay, okay. So here's the problem: is we don't know how to define alive, so we don't know how mm-hmm. to define anything. Because yeah. are your cells in your bodies alive? What's that all yes. about? Because they're doing things yeah. that you haven't no clue about. They've got their own uh-huh. brains. What's going on here? Can we just like alive? This is this is Oxford Dictionary. Google alive of a person, animal, or plant living, not dead. Alive of a person or animal, alert and active, animated. Of a person, animal, or plant. Only because we have not reached the point where we have to ask, is this robot alive? But if we're going to Transformers, the Iron Giant. Sentient. Be able to perceive or feel oh, things. No, okay, here's the problem. Iron Giant, maybe, maybe alive, maybe not. Transformers, according to the mythology, they are alive. <laughs> yes, but they're giant robots. They're not organic. Well, okay, but they're also alien fucking life beings. That's an entirely different thing. They run off of a different life force than what me and you do. They yes, are you're aliens. right. They're like silicon-based life. They're not carbon-based life. So why do Transformers get to be alive, but the Iron Giant is in question? We don't know if he was built by someone else. He could be just silicon-based life. But, oh, okay, here's why. Like, maybe. Because yeah, we don't know everything about... programmed <laughs> tactics in him that... You have to. He does. That is that is true. He does have war tactics that specifically targeted military vehicles. <laughs> You're right. He is a weapon. He is a weapon. But that does does that mean he's not alive? Because he makes decisions. The Iron Giant makes choices that go against again, that program. Again, alive. If I'm going by the Oxford definition here, for alive, and my definition for alive is carbon based, person- organic, whatever you want to fucking talk about it. Animal or plant. That is three major fucking things on our planet. Organisms. Sorry, I'm just gonna... Yeah, yeah they're okay. technically alive because those are carbon-based. I'm not saying everything that's sentient is alive or everything that's alive is sentient. This is, this is not... This is... I'm, go, I'm throwing questions that biology haven't even answered yet. yet. Yeah. Are viruses alive? No one knows! I'm, I'm not saying everything that is alive is sentient. But I'm not. I am I saying like that alive and sentient. sentient is alive. That those are the, the two. We can't have alive and like sentient. We, we, didn't, we didn't say sentient. We... Yeah, we said alive. But the, like, I if did. we're going to two states of being, alive and sentient are two states of being that I kind of define as core for a human being. Yeah, I mean that's this is the thing. Is where what is your comparison point? If your comparison point is a human, which is nine, this is what we compare everything to because it's what we yeah. are. Yeah, that's who then, we are. That's interesting. Then, like, we would have, in the past, we probably would have never said trees are alive. No, we wouldn't have. And we won't say certain robots are alive because, like, okay, so, like, you've got the grabby arms at work at car factories and something. Yeah. You wouldn't call that alive, but it, it, has, its, it has its own problem-solving mechanisms. Mm. And stuff like that. But it's because but our base point is us. Either. So if it's not like us in any way, it's prob- we won't probably call it alive. Unless okay, we can so that's... prove otherwise. Because it's like... I... Okay, so giant robot protecting. So if I... Because bro- again, we have Transformers and the Iron Giant. But a different brand would be like the Sentinels from X-Men that are programmed to hunt down mutants. I would not argue that the Sentinels are alive. Why, though? I'm trying to figure out why is it I'm like Transformers and Iron Giant are alive. Sentinels from the X-Men aren't alive. Personality? Because the Sentinels aren't. Personality is probably a big thing. But the Sentinels aren't. But the thing is, personality can be programmed. The Sentinels are all identical and they're just doing one task. Mm -hmm. I think it's the number of tasks that they are assigned that they can do. Or how many they can do. Is the T-1000 from Terminator 2 alive? Versus the T-1000 from Terminator 1. Ooh. What's the difference what? there? T-1000's Arnold, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, cool. it's, yep. If I remember yep, correctly. Yep, yep. So I know well, the like, T-1000 like... is the liquid metal one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Compared to 1 and 2, because in 1, he's just trying to kill Sarah Connor. And then in 2, he's got the whole relationship with the kid. Nope, nope. T-1000's the liquid metal one. Oh, okay. 
T2000. What? Ter- I think it's just Terminator. No, it's an earlier number. Oh, okay. The Terminator. Uh, Cyberdyne Systems Model 101. T- or, uh, or the T800, sorry. T800. Yeah. See, alive, alive, alive. What is alive? Who is alive? I, I think me, Talos is alive. I'm very basic. I think Talos is alive. Yes, I think Talos what? is alive because Medea is able to trick him by offering him immortality. Many of times, robots can be tricked. I do not believe that that is the ability to be robots alive. can I be that's tricked, the to be but sentient. No, you know, it's it's not the trick. It's the offering him something irrational. Something that Talos, as a robot, I couldn't trick my computer by offering an immortality. My computer doesn't care. It's no, but you're right. It shows that but Talos you have a has a desire. Out- has you- a desi- Let me finish. Has a desire outside of its programming. It's not meant to be want to be immortal. It is meant to protect, and that shouldn't have anything to do with it. The desire to want something outside of its programming, and thus allowing something irrational to happen, a la Medea pulling out the. The nail, I think, makes Talos alive. I would argue against that because as much as, granted, I don't like this character, but as much as I get where it's coming from, Pinocchio is not alive. P- Pinocchio is definitely alive. No, Pinocchio boy. is alive. He wants to be a real boy. Why, why would he want to be a real boy if he's already alive, Darren? Because he's a wooden puppet. He wants to be a real... That yeah, is different. He's a wooden puppet. He's a wooden fucking puppet. Who is alive has and has a conscience. He's got a conscience. Again, sentience versus aliveness. It's entirely two entirely different states of being. Pinocchio is alive. Pinocchio is sentient. He's not alive until he becomes a real boy at the end of the movie. What makes him alive? The gift of a soul? Why didn't he have a soul beforehand? The flesh and blood. Fle- Not flesh a gift and of a blood. soul. Flesh and no. blood. What? What? No. Trees are alive. They don't have flesh organic. and blood. Organic. Organic. Carbon <laughs> based. <laughs> We're back to organic. <laughs> Pinocchio wanted to be a real boy so he could assim- assimilate into human culture. It's fucking ridiculous. Why would you want to do that? I Because folklore. You want to be like everyone else. It's important to be like the rest of your community or you'll not be safe or protected by it. I can't believe you brought Pinocchio into this. No. <laughs> You know how I feel about Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Just, 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 just don't so like Pinocchio. <laughs> just so we're all aware, the only Pinocchio I st- I uh, I recognize here is the one from Shrek. Um, <laughs> Samuel, honestly, yeah. I recognize Cedarwood from Ever After High. I don't recognize the live action version of Pinocchio. <laughs> no one. Re- this is not recognized. We do not. We do not allow the floor to the live action Pinocchio. Okay, but like. Uh, See, there's so many fictional characters that this can this this alive versus yeah. dead versus mm-hmm. sentient. This entire c- debate is like raging on. Yeah, and I keep on looking at one of them. Um, yeah, which happens to be Edward from Thomas the Tank Engine. Just all the Thomas the Tank Engine characters. I don't know why I wasn't prepared for the British train enthusiast to be Thomas the Tank Engine to this one, and that's on me for not being more mentally prepared well, for this. Please I go mean, on. I mean, I wasn't going to bring it up, but we started talking about creatures being alive and dead. And oh my are, god, are the trains they're, they're alive? They're sentient. No, they they're are sentient. The most, they are the most, like, what the heck they're is also going on They're also petty fuckers. Because, because they are... Uh, depends on they're which British. version you're looking at. Because they are... <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> depends which era of Thomas the Tank Engine you're watching. Depends if you're reading the books. Don't get me stuck. Um, but like, because, okay. So these engines, they are built. Mm-hmm. Somehow they have a personality. Mm-hmm. They can develop as characters. Mm-hmm. They will never die, but they will be scrapped. Ah! They are yeah? sentient. Are they alive? And not alive. They are fully mechanical, but they have a face. And they talk, and they have pers- distinct personalities that can develop and change, but they can get scrapped. Like, okay, if you want to talk about are they alive or dead, there you go, mate. Thomas the Tank Engine blows out the water. BT, that's what his name was. BT from Titanfall 2 okay. protects, protects his pilot. Okay, uh, if we want to go back to robots name? a bit more. 
Yeah, we should um, probably just circle back to about, robots. We can also talk about uh, uh, nice. another another set, which is like another set, which is like. I mean, we can go back to t- circling via Titanfall, Voltron. I was just. About to- oh, did you put Voltron on my list? Yeah, I put Voltron <laughs> on your list. Voltron. Voltron's a mech. Voltron's a mech. They're alive. Yeah, that the lions They're alive? have their own... The, I, okay, I'm going okay, off the Legend of Defenders, the Netflix. I collab. will not allow that in this move. podcast. This is not a safe place for you anymore. <laughs> You've chosen violence here. <laughs> we, can, we can talk about Voltron if you want. We will not be defending the Netflix Legendary Defenders series. Absolutely not. Not in this house. Isn't it good into the last couple of seasons? It actually was, and that's why we don't offend it here, because it tricked me. BT from Titanfall 2 is a very good boy. I love him very much. He is not alive. He is sentient. Voltron is a mech. But the lions have their own. <laughs> the, yes, the lions. This is This is true. They can't operate without pilots, though. I feel like they can do limited function for the sake of protecting their pilot, but Voltron, as an entity, cannot function Requires, without the pilots. Yeah, yeah you have yeah. to have the pilots. Okay. Fez. 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 I think it's a good... No, I think it's good to... Because to, to, it's like, what is the difference between the Voltron and, and Talos? Because, I mean, to be fair, you brought a Voltron. It's not like I didn't do anything batshit crazy like bring up the leveler from Fern Gully on the list. Which is, in fact, just a giant fancy woodcutter, um, but I feel like it swerves into uh, giant destructive robot uh, territory once it becomes possessed by Hexus, the personification of Pollution, voiced by Tim Curry. Sounds fun. Have you never seen Ferngully? No. (laughs) DJ, have you seen Ferngully? No. Huh, I'm alone here. So I want to bring it back to Transformers because I was curious... I was curious about how how are Transformers made? Okay. Fun fact. Okay. Are you talking about the creepy alien people with the multiple faces? Fuck, maybe. I don't know. Their bodies are forged and then they're given, I'll say life here, it's because it is part of the planet. Yeah, from the AllSpark. It's part, it, and it can only come from Cybertron, the fucking planet. <laughs> So they're so, giving the planet's so, life force to live. So Talos has the Ikor, the god's life force. Sorry, Owen, oh, go on. There's all, I'm, I, I know too much about dumb things. Um, there's, <laughs> all, <laughs> there's, they also, like, the original, original Transformers were, were created by these multiple face demons that appear in the first, transfo- first, first Transformers film, like the first ever Transformers film, the animated one. Which, you got the touch, that one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And they were originally built by them, and and then there's also Ooh. Transformers on other worlds that aren't Cybertron that also, you know, it's, you know, there's questions, you know. But you have got your spark, spark falls out, you die. So it's like the Icar falls out and Talos dies. So Transformers are Transformers alive. Transformers also alive. can reproduce sexually. <laughs> Man, past guest of the show and friend Tim O'Connor is just screaming right now. I know he is. Oh, probably, yeah. But so many I, people are. <laughs> what is it? Because I'm I'm on their uh, I'm on a Wikipedia for reproduction, for sure. right? And Why? We got, what? We got no. Mechanic, we got mechanical construction. Because I want to know where they came from. Spark infusion, uh, forging, other means sexual reproduction. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, I didn't. This is this is more than I bargained for here. I did not expect them to be able to give birth. Literally, they describe it as there's not a lot. Well, first, first off, there's not a lot of evidence of humans reproducing with Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, not a lot and not zero? Why is it not, not zero? There's not, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of direct evidence, so it is implied sometimes. <laughs> and. Uh, is it, it is nevertheless revealed that some Transformers organize themselves into human-like family units that could imply organic methods of reproduction. 
Although trans, as although again, as Transformers is mostly for kids, <laughs> little mostly. has been revealed beyond infrequent mentions of parents and the occasional crude innuendo. The latter almost certainly added for comedy's sake rather than any kind of definitive canon. <laughs> That's the best article I've ever heard. Some versions of Wheelie's backstory notes that his parents died in a crash. I don't know who Wheelie is. Why are we doing this? I don't fucking know who Wheelie is. I assume a motorcycle. Why do I feel like I know who Wheelie is? I'm sad. Let's see. Oh, no. I have no idea who this dude is. I've never seen it before. Okay. That one's a little more recognizable. But. This is the thing about being a podcaster where sometimes you're like, oh, I know I'm getting something wrong and people are yelling. And I, I can't say I felt that often uh, whilst we were recording, though I'm sure it has happened. This is the episode where I feel it most acutely. That listeners are just <laughs> enraged. Giant robots. Aren't they cool? They are cool until you start asking if they're alive or not. And then they're existential. Yeah. Oh, and you've got one more on here. I, I see a Frobo. Frobo. Frobo's epic. I don't know what this um, is. Please elaborate. What Frobo uh, it's is? It's from Amphibia. Oh, shit. Oh, no. You're going to call me on not watching Amphibia yet. <laughs> no. Okay. Frobo. Amphibia. Frobo's yes. great. They appear, They first appear in season two of Amphibia. Mm-hmm. Um, they're great. They are wonderful. Um, they are a full-on robot, and they break their programming, as robots do. Mm-hmm. They're just, they are, yeah, Frobo. It's Frobo, isn't it? Is Frobo alive? No. <laughs> See, I, I knew that question was coming. <laughs> and, I mean, because I, now I don't want to spoil it because you're going to watch it. But, I, okay. You're right, you're right. So you can't have evidence to support this argument. Okay, okay. No, that's, that's fair. Uh, DJ, is 1-1 one, I... one alive? No, sadly. Oh, my well, God. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We don't know how 1-1 one, one is actually constructed. If we break him open, there's organic elements in there. He's fucking exactly. Are the he's corgis alive. alive, DJ? Are the corgis alive? Is, is Honestly, no. Name? Nobody's on that fucking train's alive. Lake? Lake's not alive? No. Lake is, orga- Lake is inorganic. I want, well, actually, that's a that, whole that other mirror? fucking thing. Person. That's mirror. Yeah, name. that's mirror. That is a whole other thing because that's mirror shit. Is your reflection alive, Darian? No, my reflection is just according an to optical... Infinity Train. It is yes, according to Infinity Train. It is, but only if you end up in the Chrome Car. But but because, that is, because when that is she goes back to different. the real world, her, she doesn't have a reflection. She doesn't anymore, have a reflection she, anymore. Which is strange. The fucking craziest thing. Are you <laughs> saying that they wouldn't just replace the reflection? This place that is so rigid on rules, they wouldn't take a dying reflection and replace it? No. <laughs> That's wild, right? Anyway. I know, I know. Anyway, let's not get off an Infinity Train right now. God, that'll no, just... like... 45 that, minutes. Infinity Train has its own shit going on, sure. If 1-1 one, one is wholly robot, he's not alive. You're really holding on to the, it must be based off of organic yes. to be alive. Yes, because that is my that is my current understanding of alive. And there really hasn't been anything real world shit. Sure, like, we could talk about animated stuff Who all we want. One, one. Yes. Who created one? Who created the fucking train? We'll never know because they canceled that fucking series. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They had eight more. Fi- they had four more shit. To- they had four more stories to tell. Doesn't matter what kind of medium it was. Who knows if we like five was going to be a movie? We could have gotten two more seasons in a game, right? Who knows? But we'll never fucking know because they canceled it. That show was mad. I loved it for it. Show was amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, Real Steel's got some killer robots. The boxing movie. <laughs> the boxing movie with Hugh Jackman. You know. Yeah, <laughs> that's got like that's mechs. got big robots. They're not giant. They're not mechs. I mean, they're being controlled, right? They're being they're controlled somewhere between mech, but they're not and being robot. controlled from inside. That's true, but they're like yeah, they're somewhere they're somewhere like between. an RC car. I don't think RC cars are robots. No, they're not. Does robots that make sense? No, RC yeah. cars aren't robots. RC yeah, cars aren't robots. so those but robots are real Those are robots. But they have to be controlled. Robots don't have to stand on their own. Yes, they do. 
you can control the robot dog and it's still a robot. Mm. I don't know. I feel like robot, robot has to be able to act independently based on cars and robots. A Tesla's no, robot. No, what? Yes. <laughs> have to, robots have to act independently? That is that is AI, Darian. AI acts, de- acts independently based on programming. No. Yes, acts independently based on programming that some person doesn't have to be in real-time monitoring. I don't think my computer's a robot. No, I don't think my computer's a robot either. That's entirely this different. This is going off robot the fucking... Is, <laughs> robot is mechanical. Robot is a mechanical, for me, okay, mechanical hold definition on, hold on. of robot. Mechanical. Okay, wait, wait. Could you build a robot out of, like, organic matter? Is Frankenstein's, is Frankenstein's monster a robot? Yes. Is it alive? Yes. Only because it's organic? Yes. But Talos in The Iron Giant is not alive. Talos might be because he's got god blood running through him. Again, <laughs> god blood, I don't know how it works. Iron Giant... I mean, we've seen the inside of him. He he fucking eats metal. Like, he's not alive. He's sentient. He's a beautiful boy. I love him so much. He's not alive. I love how this is just devolved into, name a robot. Is it alive or not? Yeah, I kind of have. Now we're questioning as to whether or not things are robots. They call it the World Robot Boxing League. You can call something and it not be accurate. Robot does not... Robot arms that we control. Like, those are fucking mechanic- robots. Okay, we okay, still call okay, a robot. Okay, well, Owen's got to... De- okay. DJ, we're doing definitions now. You brought this to the table. Definitions. Yeah, we'll do definitions. I'm okay with that. Okay, there's two definitions for a robot, which is annoying. Okay. Of course. Which means DJ is both right and Darian is both. Darian and DJ are both right. I guess I can live with that. Because one de- definition is a machine that resembles a human being and is able to replicate their movements and functions automatically well automatically that's the that's the deal breaker isn't it Mm -hmm. or it's a machine able of carrying out complex series of actions automatically unless especially one programmed by a computer automatically it can do things without real-time input if i take if i take a remote controlled unit and move it forward and it takes the step and keeps its balance automatically all I'm doing is saying, hey, move forward. That's still a fucking robot. I think I still think real-time input is different. Tesla's a robot. I'm, all I'm doing is saying, hey, move forward. And now Tesla's he's doing robot. all the other fucking work of staying, staying balanced, moving forward, taking a step, all of that. We don't think about how, how much work it actually goes into. That's a lot of fucking work to take a step. And all of those are happening automatically. All I was doing is, hey, input, move forward. Okay, that basically makes and us robots. That is thing, what the that is what the robots says move yes. forward. The, yeah, our brain says input move forward, and then our by our whole body does a bunch of. Okay, can we not? Let's not get it's into entirely what different. we are. That's just that's another existential <laughs> crisis we don't need to go into today. It is what all right. The guest is now having that's... to pull the reins on the episode. I think we all just need I mean... to report. Also, besides, Adam knows what the fuck's going on. <laughs> A- what? Adam, no, no. From no. Real Steel. A- Adam knows. Adam is sentient. It shows throughout that movie that Adam gains a little bit of sentient. Don't some of the Real Steel guys, they don't, they don't always follow commands. Isn't that the whole thing? Is that one no, of the No, robots, no, no, no. The, all the main, like, all the ones they fight. All the ones that they fight are all okay. w- Darian's fucking whack-ass definition of non-robot. Adam is special adam is sentient adam knows what's going on around him adam loves hugh jackman and his little child and it's a crime that we did not get a real steal to wait no we did i don't remember hearing anything about it because it just fucking happened i've thought of many more robot <clears throat> are they alive or dead questions if you want me to throw them out there yeah just rapid fire dj and i will not have any input because i think that just, we will not question just rapid fire go because you've got astro boy Mm-hmm. Okay. Shadow the Hedgehog. Don't ask me why that one popped into my head, but it's there. Is Shadow the Hedgehog a robot? The version of Shadow. The version we know of Shadow organic. is an android. Yeah. No, no, not o- not organic. I he, was a he was made by Robotnik. Robotnik's granddad, but yeah. Well, even still, and it's like he he's either a cl- 
he's either a clone or an android. Just he's of the he's a the ultimate shadow. life form, but he has a programmable brain and was given a soul. Ba- given a soul that was based off effectively Robotnik's cousin. Yeah, cousin. So he could do good things, but yeah, programmable, programmable brain. I I. Still not a machine, so I don't know if I'd call him a robot if he really is an organic <laughs> material, just with a programmable brain. If we're going off of definitions here. <laughs> well, just, okay, what else do you... Just, yeah, just keep breaking our brain. What else you got? I mean, and we can throw it back to Boyd's if you want. I know, I was like, oh, you're bringing up Ooh. Astro Boy. Yeah, okay, sure, Boyd. He's a totally real boy. He's definitely alive. I love him. I'll have to tell you who's boy. That's, that's, uh. He's a little robot boy from. He's he's Astro Boy of the Ducktales universe. That's what he is. Uh, okay. The episode is literally called Astro Boy. Like, come on. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, I could probably come up with weird robot thingy hybrids, but rock him, sock him for now. Oh, 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 cars from the movie Cars. Yes. The trains from Chuggington yeah. that you guys don't know about because that's a very no. British show. Mm-hmm. That I was too old to be watching, but I like trains, so I, I think I think I've there. seen it on Netflix in passing. I think I, I remember the name Chuggington. I am vaguely like familiar with Chuggington. Yeah, <gasps> the, the all the vehicles from Bob the Builder. Oh my god! All the vehicles from Bob the Builder. Oh, fuck yeah! All the vehicles from Bob the Builder. Those are probably robots. Metal Sonic. Since I've done Sonic already. Mecha Godzilla. Yep. Yep. Godzilla. Well, particularly after you know, particularly after it gets possessed by the soul of King Ghidorah. Well, that's is that what happens that's in the that thing. movie? I have no idea what, about that one. That's the thing. Is that oh, like? Oh, um, I mean, that is no. what happens in that movie. But I don't. Yeah, think I think Godzilla could be a mech, or you're fucking a whack ass definition of, of non robot where they're controlling him. <laughs> He's not doing I, I things thought automatically. I've got a new Transformer to talk about. And this yeah. is from the films. The okay. Galvatron film version. Galvatron from the films. Is it Galvatron? The Megatron upgrade. Oh, see, I, I've Galvatron. seen Bumblebee. And that's it. No, we, we definitely saw the live action movies. Oh, we did see them. I, yeah, I okay. wanted to go well, see them. Really I only hard. care about Bumblebee. <laughs> Bumblebee. That's fair. I only saw the first one. I know I didn't see the others. And all that, all that set from that movie that were made by humans. Yeah. They were made by humans Sorry. from Transformium, dumbest one of the another dumb oh, thing. Oh no. <laughs> I definitely just wanted to talk about robot fights. I might that try was my to intention. Bring up robot fights, Darren, and you said that they weren't robots. I think we need to leave now. I think we just need to leave. We have to leave behind all the robots. That robot's alive. <laughs> That's the whole point of the movie. No. Yes. No, the whole point of the movie Sentient. is questioning if it's alive or dead. That's the point of the movie. Yes. Is the question. Sentience. He's breaking programming. He's not alive. He's sentient. <laughs> oh, and thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, I'm I'm dragging the episode to the big house so you can show off any uh, trophies. Uh, you've collected from your many quests. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Just the podcast. Through the Mist. Yeah, I do law stuff. There's an episode on death with Darian if you want to check that out because there's someone you already know. Um, Yay. But then you can and try all... some others. Why not? You don't really have to listen to them in order. So go check that out. Through the Mist. On whatever you're listening to this on, just type it in. There you go. Yeah, you'll find it. You'll find it. You'll also Detroit find Detroit Become uh, Human. A no, I'm, I've locked the door. Robots are outside of the room. Robots have left the room. There are no robots in the room. No robots in the room. No. A whole game about whether or not robots are alive or dead. Oh, God. Not A whole 40 hour room. experience that you get to choose what goes on. C3 Thank you guys so much for listening. No, we can't. No, we can't do the droids. We can't. BB8, R2, like BD1. Like, we can't do this. No. <sighs> thank you guys so much for joining us here on the main feed <laughs> it's been an absolute blast yeah what do you think are robots alive definitely just let us know let us know on all the socials just come yell at us I please just tell tell me who's right is DJ right is Darian right who's alive just yeah 
Let's just start. Let's just spread this everyone's out. You know you want to. Long. Perfect. Yeah, exactly what Owen said. Uh, go listen to Owen's <laughs> podcast. It's really fun, especially if you care about lore or just like he does such a good job diving into how the Ryan Reverse books work and asking the questions that honestly I'd never even think to ask or kind of just accept is like, yeah, this is a fact, whatever, and don't really personally dissect. It's really cool to have someone who cares about this stuff deep dive and dissect what these elements are. So if you like it, when we go off on wild ass tangents, you're going to love Owen's podcast. So do that. Yeah, you'll find it. Like just said, those tangents. <laughs> yep. Uh, there are, like I said, search it in the, your favorite podcatcher. I also have a link. No! <laughs> robots have left the room also if you decided that this just isn't enough Darren and DJ losing their mind content uh, you can swing over to the Patreon where we finally recorded our episode about Trials of Apollo in which we just talked about it really that's it not really any hot takes I mean I have some gripes uh, but we just talked about it we like it a lot that's that's the plot point hot if you want to hear us agreeing more it's a good fucking more. series apparently it's a good series actually yeah that last paragraph gets me Oh, it's so good. We didn't even talk about the last paragraph, dude. But yeah, uh, so if you're like, wow, there was a lot of uh, sibling contention in this episode and you want a little bit more siblings being on the same page, uh, swing by patreon.com slash podcast of Poseidon and you can listen to that episode and all of our bonus episodes for as little as $5 a month. You get so much more podcast of Poseidon contents. Oh, and thank you again for joining us and uh, staying on as things went completely off the rails in a way I did not expect today. Chappy. Didn't see that. No! Movie, about a robot trying to find his way. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone. We will be back on May 10th to talk about Athena. And until Wrong. next time, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. It's a good plan. Tron is alive. <laughs> Podcast of Poseidon is created and hosted by Darian and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darian Smart. The show is produced by Darian and DJ Smart, as well as... Tim O'Connor. The Crystal Con Man. Dionysus the Drunk. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hayne. And our cover art is by Audrey Miller. You can find her on Instagram at Bombshell Nutshell Art. Like the show? Ready for more? Support Podcast of Poseidon on Patreon. Just $1 gets you exclusive bonus content. Find out more at patreon.com slash podcast of Poseidon. Can't spare the drachmas? You can support the show by leaving a review on Apple Podcast or by sharing us with your friends. Find all of our episodes and episode transcripts at podcastofposeidon.com. Thanks for listening.